Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to One Snatch. Big announcement, I'm going to stop doing Drag Race reviews. There's way too much going on in the world for me to talk about a show that I'm not being so excited for nowadays, okay? The production seems a bit weird and stilted. Pangina's elimination left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, there's a lot of shenanigans going on in Drag Race 14, non-eliminations, this scheduled coming out of trans girls that's a little bit off. And this is monstrous bill against trans people in Texas. Okay, I'm going to talk about all this while I get myself into a kind of a coronavirus queen kind of look. So a lot of current events today, and if that's what you see, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications and stay tuned to the end to see what I have planned for next time. All right, see ya. All right, I'm going to get right into this. Okay, the world's really going crazy and, you know, I think I'm getting a bit of a carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> editing my video, so I might be laying off YouTube for a while. Okay, um, it's already better. The reason is because I do a lot of editing on a bloody trackpad, so I'm going to start using a mouse and seeing whether this wrist re recovers. There's a lot of numbness in this hand, so, you know, age is catching up. <laughs> Alright, milk and the world is just really nuts. I mean, listening to so much of the coverage of the war in Ukraine, I find it very difficult to concentrate on just, you know, editing a silly drag race video. I'm going to continue doing looks because it really helps to release stress and, you know, helps me express myself. I am going to try to do other things as well. I bought a lot of stuff to learn new skills, so I'm going to be learning a whole bunch of other skills like cosplay skills and everything, and you'll be seeing that in the next few months, but I will be cutting back on YouTube so I have time to do all that, alright? So I promise it will be worth it <laughs> for the 170 of you who are out there watching me. <laughs> All right, so the Ukraine war. This is one of the first wars that we've actually seen in real time and also affecting a largely white, blonde haired, blue eyed refugee population. That's why it's getting so much coverage in the West, especially. Okay, it's heartbreaking seeing the bombings and everything. It's quite horrible and traumatic and I really hope that it doesn't escalate into World War 3. But what I really want to talk about here is Russia and Putin's stance on LGBT people and the potential oppression that you might get in Ukraine if Russia gets to Kiev and takes over the city. Okay, I mean, right now, right now it's still a lot of bombing and everything and I don't know what's going to go on. But I think the Ukrainians are really suffering and it's, it's something that I think we should talk about. Putin is obviously a delusional madman who seems to have lost his grip on reality and some people say he's actually sick okay and he's taking and he's this is like a last ditch effort to drag the whole world down with him and that's really disgusting and he's known to have quite anti-lgbt views okay it's no secret that russia has policies that are really anti-lgbt just scraping this out use up as much of it as possible and of course now Russia is trying to flex its muscle to prevent Ukraine from being absorbed into NATO and also trying to restore some former glory of the USSR or something. So it's trying to invade Ukraine or destroy Ukraine in the process, okay? And it's really, really hard to watch. And, but you know, it's quite encouraging to see that Russia has kind of miscalculated and it seems like the Ukrainians are fighting back and rallying. And not least the LGBT Ukrainians because they know what it means, okay, if Russia takes over. Let's try a bit of this AOA in porcelain. It's no surprise that Donald Trump supported Russia so much, mainly because I think they played into its evangelical base because, you know, Russia and Putin has always spouted that it rebuked Western liberal political ideology, in particular stuff with um, LGBT issues and gender identity. And, and Putin has been quoted as saying, um, Russia should, should maintain its spiritual values and historical traditions, okay? All these are dog whistles for traditional family values and stuff like that, okay? And that these social-cultural disturbances could be bad for Russia. He has been quoted as saying a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl, and, and that letting them explore their gender identity and being gender non-conforming is a crime against humanity. And he has also signed a gay propaganda law, okay, in 2013, okay, upholding traditional family values. So very, very conservative and very anti-LGBT. Even as soon as um, February 2022, they tried to shut down one of one of Russia's prominent, most prominent LGBT news sites. It was called the Spheres for Foundation and they tried to get it shut down, but fortunately this was not successful. And when Russia invaded Chechnya, I think in the 1990s, 
they basically had a crackdown on the LGBT population there, okay, driving it largely underground. So I, I think the Ukrainians know that if Russia takes over Kiev, this is what's going to be happening to them as well. In fact, it's already happened, okay, in some parts of Ukraine, especially the Donbas region, and that's the south part where Russia has already annexed. There's, a, there's been a crackdown by Russians such that the LGBT community there are really persecuted, okay, experiencing violence and detention and assault and everything. So it's quite scary what this could mean for the rest of Ukraine if Russia takes over. There are a lot of reports coming out about how the Ukrainians, the LGBT ones especially, are staying to fight, okay? And that's very inspiring to see. So if you can, please donate to some of these associations. I'll be listing them down in the description below. And it's not just the LGBT people that I'm concerned about. It's also the creators, okay? One of these accounts that I follow, the Hidori Hope Wigs account, apparently has been struggling because they can't receive payments. Their PayPal has been completely disconnected from the rest of the world and all their savings are gone. So, you know, a lot of creators are suffering as well. And you know, if you talk about LGBT people very closely associated are the sex workers. People on OnlyFans are also suffering because they could not access their accounts for a while. OnlyFans has reinstated this, okay, um, to some people in Russia and Belarus, and hopefully they'll be able to differentiate between the people who are suffering and oppressed than those who have the power to, you know, change Putin's mind, I don't know, okay? Right now, all the sanctions are basically targeted at the elites and the people who have been profiting off Putin and his horrible, um, policies, so hopefully this will strangle them enough to reach Putin somehow. Okay, today is going to be a bit of a sad, smoky eye. I think I will, um, it won't be as cartoony as my usual ones, but I think I will try to keep it quite sad looking, okay? A bit inspired by my friends, okay, the House of Hot Mess, they've been doing these very sad 1920s makeup recently. Okay, and to bring it back to drag race a little bit, you know how Rue this week has, she said to Lady Camden, she said to Georges, what you're good at, okay, on the runway, bring it to everything else. Apply that confidence and everything to everything else and you'll be, you will succeed. That's exactly what Vladimir Zelensky is doing, okay? He was actually a comedian in a past life, okay? And he did things like, you know, he voiced Paddington Bear. He did a lot of comedy sketches, really risque things like playing a piano with his penis, but he was elected as president of Ukraine. And now he's using all that, okay? His knowledge of communication, his knowledge of video production and everything to appeal to NATO and the West to help, as well as rallying morale, okay, for all his people, releasing videos every day in a bunker somewhere. I think that's really what Ru means when, you know, take what you're good at and apply it to everything, okay? Even in war. Can you imagine what <laughs> drag queens would do in a war? <laughs> I'm gonna powder this really quickly now and I'll be back to talk about something parallel, okay? The anti-LGBT law in Singapore, all right? Uh, stay tuned. All right, so I've powdered everything. I put some more foundation here to give me a base and today I'm gonna try to use my Smoke and Roses Colourpop palette and I'm gonna be doing a, I guess a very rosy kind of a smoky eye, sad eye. Okay, this is uh, pre-tender. Okay, so this is in my bio, in my Instagram, okay, that I'm here and, and it's also in my description. One of the reasons I started this channel was to bring awareness to 377A, which is the law that bans unnatural sex acts, okay? In Singapore and you know Singapore being a developed country still has a law that criminalizes gay sex okay Putin would love that okay it's an old British law which was probably made to stop the British colonial um, administrative people from having sex with male prostitutes so they wouldn't be compromised by um, these sex acts okay so the original 377 outlawed all sorts of things everything from necrophilia to bestiality, even anal sex between a man and a woman, okay, and oral sex as well. And 377A is a, is a sub-clause which, which criminalizes sex between men. And in 2007, they actually repealed this law, but kept 377A, which meant that it wasn't illegal anymore for women to give men blowjobs, but it was still illegal for two men to have consensual sex, two adult men to have consensual sex. Okay, so this was a huge deal, and we've been trying to get this law overturned for a very long time. 
And basically, and, and you know, I've done a few videos on this. The last challenge, this last challenge was actually brought to court in 2019, okay, by three groups of people, okay, my friends, okay, I, I think I know all of them, okay, it's um, DJ Big Kid, Johnson Ong, okay, um, Brian Chung from Ugu Chaga, and Dr. Roy Tan, okay, they all had different ways of trying to show that this law is unconstitutional, and, and ever since then, it's been in consideration by the Chief Justice, okay, by the courts, okay, oh, that went on quite, quite nicely, okay, so now I'm going to buff out those edges with a little bit of alone, And two weeks ago, they came up with a ruling that basically said, we're keeping the law. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's, it was a real big blow to all of us. I mean, it wasn't unexpected, okay? Singapore has been very, very conservative in this. And, and there are a lot of vocal conservative people who have the ear of the ministers and, and the government to basically keep this law around. Okay, going in with this guy, which is a deeper maroon. I'm going to pack this here on the outer corner and drag it in oh this is super pigmented <sighs> what in the ruling was a little bit hopeful is that although it finds that most of this law is unenforceable okay it wanted to keep it to maintain the status quo and to maintain the um, social cohesion, okay, and to prevent polarization. So it's really, really stupid the way it was phrased, but at least they've said now that this law until now is unenforceable and it's up to parliament on whether they, they want to keep this law around. I'm pretty sure this was cheered in a lot of private telegram groups of social conservatives and Christians. I'm just gonna bring this in. Going back in with pretender to just blend this out. Blending it downwards a bit more this time and giving me that lift. Okay, so right now they're kicking the can down the road again and it's been kicked back to Parliament to decide whether these laws will be kept in the books. Okay, and I guess it's going to be another couple of years before they discuss this in court. And you know, it is a there's a bit of a glimmer of hope. That's what they keep giving us, okay? Glimmers of hope, okay? Without actually changing anything and this is how they keep us like, you know, in line. But um, Mr. Shanmugam, who is our Minister of Law and Home Affairs, has said that they will consider all viewpoints, okay? And he has admitted that the attitudes towards LGBT individuals have changed over the years. And he has acknowledged that LGBT people have suffered, okay, under this law. Currently, is this all pretty much still lip service? And I really hope that they do the right thing moving forward, okay, and be on the right side of history. Okay, now I'm just going to add some of this black called Smoked Out. Okay, and of course, bringing all this back to Drag Race. On Drag Race UK versus the World last week, Mon Hart talks a bit about her relationship with Faith. Her mother was a minister, and she was a minister at one point too, and of course, her experience with conversion therapy. Of course, this isn't the first time they talked about conversion therapy on Drag Race. Okay, Dusty Ray Bottoms in season 10 also came out about her experience with conversion therapy. And you know, in Singapore, although it's not publicized, I'm pretty sure conversion therapy is still going on, okay? I think last year or the year before, there was this ex-lesbian who came onto social media to basically lamblast homosexuality and everything. And I have a feeling that she was part of some of these conversion things that have been going on in Singapore. Okay, and conversion therapy in Singapore, up to now, is still not illegal. Okay, so repealing this 377A would definitely help to get rid of these horrible, immoral practices. Okay, and it's not just, you know, the gay laws that need to be repealed, but they, we have a lot of trans people in Singapore who are suffering as well. Okay, I used to think that Singapore had quite progressive transgender legislation because we allowed people to change their sex and their identity card and stuff like that. But it's really still quite oppressive because you're only allowed to change your sex after you've got undergone complete medical and surgical transition. And that's not how trans people work. There's a huge spectrum of transgender people as well, okay? We can see this on Drag Race season 14 this year when Willow Pill <laughs> just came out as transgender. There's a huge journey that a trans person goes, okay? Anywhere, everywhere from what Willow Pill is identifying as trans femme and exploring the beginning of her gender journey to someone like Carrie Colby who has completely come out as transgender. So I think there is a lot of conversations that we still need to have in Singapore about trans individuals. I'm going to cut the crease really quickly and I'm going to come back to talk about transgender stuff, okay? There's a really horrific transgender bill going through Texas right now that I think we need to talk about. All right, finished up around the eyes. Okay, so 
looking very, very intense. But, you know, I've got to go in with the rest of the face now to warm this up. I'm going to use my Max Studio Fix um, in NW45. Okay, this has always served me well. This is going to warm up everything. And what's happening in America now? Okay, so there's some really horrible attempts at legislation in Texas going on right now. Texas recently, as you all probably know, has passed a bill basically outlawing abortion and getting its citizens to report on people getting abortions, okay? So it's basically illegal in, in Texas right now. And they're doing the same thing for trans people. They've managed to get a statewide definition of transgender health care as child abuse. Okay, so any child undergoing any form of transgender health care is considered being abused. And anyone around the child, especially teachers, doctors, healthcare professionals, babysitters and everything, are basically made into what they call mandatory reporters. And they are obliged to report this to Child Protective Services, okay, for any form of transgender healthcare. And this ranges from just counselling, which is a usual thing, counselling, living as the opposite gender, being called the opposite name, and um, when it comes to the time, puberty blockers, okay? So transgender healthcare has been in practice for almost a century, and it's very well established, and it has been approved by the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, and the American Pediatric Association. And it has been shown that transgender healthcare, within the first year of its implementation, reduces the incidence of mental illness and self-harm in these children. So it's actually very beneficial. But it seems like conservatives, after um, gay marriage in America has been legalized, need another target in the LGBT spectrum to rally around, okay? And unfortunately, transgender people were an easy target, okay? Gay and lesbians are quite common, so I think everyone kind of knew a gay or a lesbian person. And this and this visibility actually helped a lot of conservatives get on the side of gay marriage. But unfortunately, trans, transgender people are much less common and still hiding in a lot of places. So, so people don't really know as much as they, as much as they think. And it's very easy to demonize this group. Now I'm gonna go into this dark shade. Oh, I forgot my brows. I will go for a saddish brow. So things like puberty blockers sounds quite scary to, to a person who's never heard it before. But puberty blocker is actually very safe treatment, okay? It's basically a drug or an injection that stops puberty in its tracks, okay? It doesn't cause sterility and it doesn't cause cancers and all, all these lies that have been perpetuated in the right-wing media. And it's very similar to some of the laws that were passed in the UK. Unfortunately, I think the outreach and the education, the public education on what transgender healthcare really is, is lacking in so many places. And we really need to try to get the message out there that transgender healthcare is actually beneficial for children. But you know, it really is a straw man for the, for the religious right, okay, to rally around, to oppress someone, okay? They need to oppress someone to make people feel safe that the, that the country is not being overrun by liberals. And this isn't the first time that it's happened, okay? In the last few years, we've, we've seen a pattern, okay, of going after transgender people. Everything from the bathroom bills to trying to exclude trans athletes from sport are all ways that the right have been, has been trying to push this agenda. It's really, really quite sad. And I really hope everyone just watches Drag Race to see how affirming, exploring your gender expression can be. Okay, I wouldn't be doing this <laughs> every week <laughs> if, it, if it were detrimental to my mental health, or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay, sad brow. Okay, so sad brows. Um, blend that back in to the eyeshadow. My KVD blush will go quite well with this. So let's just use this. I used this last week. It's a very nice cool tone, blend quite nicely into this eye. And it's getting so bad in Texas that a lot of families of trans kids are actually moving out of the state, okay? And if they manage to get this, in, make this into an actual law, it's going to be quite devastating because they're probably going to do this in other conservative states as well. Okay, for lips, I'm going to try this new Kimchi Chic Plastic Tiara Nude Sensation. Okay, I'm going to go for a big nude lip. Fill this in with the sentiment, Jeffy Star. I'm gonna use some of these shades in the ColourPop palette to contour this lip. Okay, so I think Drag Race this season is really showcasing a lot of transgender people and a lot of how being exposed 
to other trans people thriving can actually help you on your gender journey. So I think really, they should really be broadcasting this on all the mainstream news sites in Texas. It's because of the representation of people like Carrie Colby that helped people like Jasmine Kennedy and Willow Pill to find their own gender identity. And it, we really have to stop thinking about gender as being so binary and restricting ourselves on what society is telling us that we have to be, all right? Okay, so I'm almost done. I'm just going to fix up that, this lip a little bit. Maybe add some tears to my face and I'll be back with the finished look, all right? And a wrap up and my plans for the future. See you in a bit. All right, and this is the finished look. Ethereal angel with a halo made of <laughs> rapid tests. <laughs> okay, and you know, don't forget to get tested and get vax for the coronavirus. And you know, when I think about this violence against trans kids in Texas, I can't help but compare it to things like lynchings and everything that happened when black people in the South were, you know, getting more visibility and more success. Okay, there is a backlash, okay, against trans visibility and we have to fight against this and remind ourselves, okay, to always air on the side of love and acceptance, okay? And I think this can also go all the way to Singapore as well and to hopefully Russia and Ukraine. If Putin is hearing this, I'm hoping he will, you know, let loose on the war. And you know, if I were his mother, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have been such a horrible person. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Alright, so as I said, this is probably going to be the last of me on YouTube for a while. I will probably pop back in to do some collabs and makeovers and maybe vlogging my new techniques or something like that, okay? I bought a whole bunch of stuff to teach myself stuff like Eva Foam airbrushing and everything because I really want to, you know, up my game here. Alright, so follow me on Instagram and TikTok because, you know, I'll be posting stuff there. And, you know, I'll see you in the magazines, as Violet Charlesby says. Alright, bye. Halo of ARTs. Ethereal baby doll dress. RuPaul loves baby doll dresses recently. Maybe if Putin wore a baby doll dress, he'd be, you know, less homophobic. Everyone should wear a baby doll dress once in a while. Alright, so check out my other videos. Um, I have talked about 377A before, so check that out. And also I interviewed some people of this rascals incident in Singapore where police tried to crack down on gay people once, but failed. See ya.